first I need to figure out why people are wearing their mics like this these days. It just looks like a big box on a shirt. What do you think, Taco? Do you not care because you don't care or that you're a cat? It's because you're a cat. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about ZWO filters, specifically ZW narrowband and also LRGB filters. I'll be discussing specs, pricing, back focus requirements, and also how they performed for me over the years. ZWO filters will come in a few sizes. They'll come in one and a quarter, they'll come in two inch, and they'll also come in 31 millimeter unmounted and also 36 millimeter unmounted. The average thickness of these filters are about two millimeters and the average thickness with the um, bezel around it, what, what is this? <laughs> with the bezel around it is about 5.5 millimeters. So they are very low profile and I didn't yet appreciate this until I started getting accessories for my filters. Uh, such as a filter wheel and also a filter drawer. Uh, most of today's filter drawers and filter wheels uh, will require a filter that is very, very low prof profile. So ZWO did meet this need very, very well. Very, very, very well. Good job, ZWO. <laughs> First, let's talk about the narrowband filters. And if you have any questions about what narrowband is, I actually made a video about that and I'll put that link in the description. So watch that. And uh, I'm sure a lot of these terms I'll be using will make even more sense to you. Even more sense to you? Will make more sense to you. Dude, what are you doing, Taco? We're filming here. Yeah. Oh, that scared you? ZWO filters will come in their standard frequency responses. HA will be 656 nanometers, S2 will be 672 nanometers, and O3 will be 500 nanometers. Also, you'll have a IR cutoff at about 700 nanometers, so no worries about star bloating here. One thing to note is the newer ZWO filters will have an anti-reflective coating on them. Now, ZWO claims that this coating will reduce the halo effect and reflections that you might capture. And it really depends on what type of scope and what is in your imaging train. Honestly, I've, I've never had any issues with halos around my stars. I think most filters, especially in the O3 channel, you're just going to get halos. Here's actually a before and after on ZWO's website about how their new anti-reflective coatings work to minimize some of those halos around their stars. Now these filters will come at a moderately narrow band pass at about 7 nanometers. It's narrow enough where you're, you'll be able to do narrow band imaging from light polluted areas and also during full moon nights. And that's with the caveat that you won't be shooting right next to the moon. So think of shooting something at the other part of the sky where the moon is not. But I think that this is quite a great value, especially for the price. And I did get some prices for you guys here. And keep in mind, these prices can fluctuate depending on the time of year that you buy these filters. So let's see here. Uh, one and a quarter inch filters will cost you $332. Two inch filters will cost you $224. 31 millimeter filters will cost you $383. And 36 millimeter filters will cost you $431. Wow, filters are expensive, huh? I've been shooting with these filters for the past two years now. And actually, this is my first set of narrowband filters that I have ever purchased. And I purchased them because at the time I needed a budget set of filters. And I think 
And I still think that to this day is for the price and what you get with these filters, I think it is a really, really great value. Uh, here are some examples of some pictures I've taken. Here's a picture of the Horsehead Nebula that I took last year in 21. This is about six hours of exposure time through a Z73 refractor in full SHO Hubble palette. And these are typical results of what you would be getting with this filter. I did also use these filters with my SCT uh, with Hyperstar actually, and ZWO cautioned me that uh, these filters are not meant to shoot down at F2, but I did it anyways and with great results. So here's a picture of the Rosette Nebula that I took actually just a few weeks ago. And this is two hours of exposure time total with Hyperstar. And it's got a lot of contrast. It, it has a lot of color in there. So uh, I'm very impressed with these narrowband filters. And I thought that maybe two years down the road, I would be wanting better filters, but I'm honestly really happy with this budget set. I, I really haven't wanted filters until actually recently since I got my Harp Hyperstar and that's only for the Hyperstar because I was like, you know, okay, maybe I should get F2 filters, right? But I'm not in any rush. Uh, to get them because the filters that I have work very, very well. Okay, so now let's talk about the LRGB filters. And these will come in, of course, sets of four. And they actually work really good for the price. These are probably the least expensive filters that uh, you will purchase is the LRGB filters. Since we're on the subject, uh, I did get some prices for you guys on these filters and also keep in mind that depending on the type of time of year you purchase these they could be more or less so here it is as of today uh, one and a quarter inch filters will set you back 133 dollars for all four two inch filters will set you back 269 dollars uh, 31 millimeter filters will cost you $152 and 36 millimeter filters cost $179. And also keep in mind the 31 millimeter and 36 millimeter versions are also unmounted. These filters will also have a really steep cutoff at both the UV part and also the IR part of the spectrum. So you won't need an additional UV IR cut filter to use these filters. You can just use them as is. Uh, they'll also pass up to 92% of the light to your camera. So they are very efficient. These filters also feature the anti-reflective coating that the ZWO narrowband filters do. And I think I'm actually more excited about true color RGB imaging because I don't get to do it a lot. Uh, every time I want to do it, there's either a full moon. I should say when I can do it, there's a full moon and RGB is not a great thing to do during a full moon or it's just super cloudy. So maybe it's just my luck, but the times that I've used these filters and I hope to use them more now that I have Hyperstar I've gotten really great results through them. A, they're just standard RGB filters at a really, really great price. Now, let's talk about back focus. Now, before I was saying that these filters are roughly the same size. Each filter is about two millimeters. The average thickness is two millimeters for these filters. So. Uh, for really critical, I should say critical focus setups, it will change your back focus by, wait, I worked this out here earlier, 0.66 millimeters. So, and if you're wondering what 
if your system, like if your system now, like you're thinking about now that I mentioned it is critical focus. If you're questioning yourself or don't know what that is, don't even worry about it. It's, this is for the people that either shoot at really extended focal lengths or are shooting down at like F2 or whatnot. So that's when back focus, you'll able to see like small deviations in back focus. But if you have a wide field reflect, refractor, refract, refractor, reflector, <laughs> you won't have to worry about it at all. So you will still be in the Goldilocks zone uh, even with this small deviation in the back focus. And here's a picture using these filters of M51 using my Xenostar Z73 through a light cloud cover. The uh, struggle is real out here in Seattle, guys. So, <laughs> But these results are typical of what you would get with these filters. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. I'm really curious to see if any of y'all have ZWO filters and what your experiences have been with them as well. Please add them down in the comments below. And I guess that's it for this one, guys. All right. I guess I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>